Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. Mr. Speaker, I wish to start by saying that uh, one of my favorite books is Good Girls Never Get the Corner Office. Mr. Speaker, this is in response to what you are telling me earlier in the morning. When you are urging me to be a good example to the girls, uh, the younger ones who are doing their first term, Mr. Speaker, if they are good girls, they'll never get corner office. Be as bad as Mili or Diabo, you will be the mother of this house. I am a bad girl, and as a bad girl, I'm here serving my fourth term. So do not be cheated like the African culture, where you are told have decorum, dress nicely, be kind, be nice. I'm telling you, you will go nowhere. Be a bad girl like me, and you'll get somewhere. Mr. Speaker, having said that, I wish to declare my interest under uh, uh, the uh, standing orders number 90, which Wamushomba uh, stood on, uh, because I don't want to be declared disorderly. And that is because when you have a pecuniary or personal interest, you declare. And Mr. Speaker, I want to declare my interest as a former user of sanitary towels, and as dynasty, as a former user of uh, diapers, and as a future user of diapers. Because as a woman, once you get menopausal, you will have leaks and you will use diapers. And Mr. Speaker, uh, I want to say, uh, not, it's not all women, so Rosa should not be worried, but there are women who get leaks. And I want to say that there are people, because of, we don't want to have shame of um, menopausal issues, we don't want shame of a period. And Mr. Speaker, I am saying this because I've been sitting here today listening patiently to the men talking about sanitary towels that is in the finance bill. And they are speaking with authority. If we wanted to save money uh, 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 the, the way the finance committee has done and want to tax anything else, go and tax men uh, 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 in our ass. Go and tax men in our ass. Don't speak on our issues as women. Let us be the one to speak about sanitary towels. We are the ones who know what, want, what works for us. And you are saying we want to encourage the local manufacturing. While you are waiting to, manu to, to, create, to enable our local manufacturing um, agencies to create those, uh, those uh, sanitary towels, will we tell our uh, periods to stop? The, our periods will not stop while you are manufacturing. Our girls will have their menses as usual. And the cost that they are used to will be higher because that will come through underground. What I am saying is, Mr. Speaker, I do not support the finance bill. And I'll give you the reasons why I don't support it. One, I don't support it because it's devoid of a strong policy underpinning. Number two, I don't support it because it's not premised on a better model, but on a beta model. The, the KK government told us that there are things are premised on BETA, but increasingly we are seeing it premised on BITTER, beta model. That's why I'll not support it. And, and Mr. Speaker, the other reason I will not support it, it's because it encourages opulence. Look at how much money I have. Look at the price of my watch. It have a five million watch, and I'll explain why, Mr. Speaker. So do not be in a hurry to ask me to explain. I'm going to explain. Mr. Speaker, number one, the one I've talked about, the tax system that is devoid of a strong policy underpinning or premised on a flawed policy underpinning. I will give you the example of the eco, levies, uh, the eco levy that seeks to strike a balance between the economy and ecology but fails miserably to do that. Mr. Speaker, if I give you an example, this government has actually sponsored or facilitated the roads in Fangano Island and the tarmac in Rusinga Island, even though they are taking pretty long. And I want to tell you, Mr. Speaker, that if you are to use this model, the taxing model that they are saying, then it means that a contractor who is doing those roads and earning billions on those roads, Mr. Speaker, when they destroy the environment, the fishermen from Rembarigiti, Rusiga, Mfangano, and uh, Sukuru Island, who will be making at most 1,000, will be asked to repair that person's damage through tax. Forgetting the PPP principle, the person who destroys is the one who should pay that damage. Not me, 
the fisherman of Omena, making 1,000, you are expecting me to pay the tax of a person who is earning billions doing that road. I do not support this tax. Mr. Speaker, I can give you another example. Mr. Speaker, the second example I'm going to give is uh, on the issue of the smartphones again. And I want to thank Honorable Rachel Nyamai, who actually said that one of her, uh, the ladies that she's sponsoring her education, when she talked to her, the lady told her, I'm here doing TikTok. And we do not actually seem to understand how that relates to this tax. Now I'll tell how it relates to this tax. Mr. Speaker, if you are taxing digital content, Mr. Speaker, this girl has gone to town. I can tell you after this, Rachel Nyamai, myself and others will be on TikTok. The girls will be imitating us on TikTok. And they will be making money imitating us on TikTok. And then under this tax, we are telling them we are taxing you TikTok. Why? They are doing that because there are no jobs. They have become innovative and look for their own jobs. And after they have got to their own jobs, an industry that has not solidified, like teaching, like law, we want to kill that industry that is helping our young people. That is why the Gen Zs were on the streets. And Mr. Speaker, I'm so thrilled that I was shown a photo of a young girl who looks like me, and some people were saying, Millie, we can see you are here now, you can retire. And I wish she was in my constituency, I would have retired tomorrow. And Mr. Speaker, yesterday, my own niece, who I am the one who has raised since she was in primary school, she's lived in my house. I was with her. And I tried all the means to try and divert her attention from what was going. How she managed to sneak in, and this morning she's telling me, and Mr. Speaker, before I got to what she was telling me, I told her, can I give you a lift to town? She told me, no, auntie. I cannot be associated with members of parliament. Your generation, you have messed this country. We have to fix it, Gen Z. If we do not un un take Tuesday, Super Tuesday, as a wake-up call as a country, I don't know what else will take up as a wake-up call as a country. And I want to tell the president, who I served with in the same committee in parliament, who was my classmate in the university, Fire those guys that you have hired who are giving you economic advice. They are not helping you at all. How do you even imagine bringing something like taxing bread, even if it is as a joke? That is a joke carried too far. That is a joke carried too far. You can crack doctors elsewhere. You can find a situation where the young people have burned the country based on your joke. Try those jokes elsewhere. Because Kenyans are suffering. Kenyans are tired of being taxed. And if we cannot listen to the Kenyans who are tired of being taxed, we have no business being in this house. We must listen to the Kenyans. And I want to say that you have done well in trying to uh, deal with some of those issues. But there are still very many that are still here, Mr. Speaker. Because we have a short time, I may not mention all of them. But I want to say, like, for instance, the eco-levy. We are talking about trying to be environmentally friendly. Yet the things that we are taxing, we are not doing exactly that, Mr. Speaker. And we are taking away jobs of young people by the tax. Look at the increase in fuel. We are taking with the right hand. We are saying we are removing the tax with the right hand and adding with the left hand. Mr. Speaker, I had a lot to say about this. But I can see my time is almost up. And what <laughs> I can see on my side, they want to add me. But I want to say, I want to say that because of time I may not speak, but I just want to urge the president, fire the guys who are around you, listen to Kenyans. I was speaking to some of my colleagues here. Thank goodness I've been here for a long time.